If you have a spouse with bad credit and thinking about buying a home, this video is for you. Listen, the VA home loan is awesome as we always talk about that on the channel, but most of you watching, which by the way, thank you, are eligible to use the VA home loan, but unfortunately, a lot of veterans buying a home with a spouse don't qualify to use the VA home loan simply because of credit issues. I'm not saying you need to get a new spouse, but you really need to understand what goes into it so you can position yourself in a much better spot to utilize the VA home loan and take advantage of all the positive things that go with that. Now, I always say and won't stop saying this is that Credit is a major factor to having good credit. If you can balance your budget from a monthly perspective, you'll be able to get ahead. And typically, folks that have bad credit, it's going to be mostly related to either having lates because you can't pay your bills on time. It's going to be collections because you didn't pay some bills or an easy one to fix but does take time is over utilizing credit. Uh, so let's just say you have a you know $10,000 balance and your uh, $10,000 limit on your credit card and your balance is $10,000. Well, guess what? That's going to have a significantly negative impact on your credit, right? So on top of the many factors that go into the VA home loan itself, credit uh, is one that could make or break you actually using the VA home loan and you fought for your country to get that VA loan. So just know how it works, right? Credit uh, really affects four key parts when using the VA home loan with a spouse or at least a soon to be spouse, right? So one of those things is going to be affordability. And that's the things we're going to break down affordability, it's going to be qualification, interest rates and fees. That's why it's so important for you to have that discussion with your significant other uh, about what their finances look like, right? They can make all the money in the world, which is great, good for you. But the thing is, is that without having, unless you're buying cash, okay, then it's kind of whatever. You really don't need good credit because uh, you just have, you're able to pay everything in cash. But most people require uh, financing, especially if you want it to be a part of using that VA home loan. Because uh, they did a whole separate video, which I'll link down below around uh the downside when a spouse is not in the mortgage and you were to pass away, the significant impact, but that's a video in itself. Again, I'll, I'll link that down below. Or you could check out the channel, VA Housing Education. Like and subscribe so you can get more content like this. So let's go over the four different um, areas that it factors into. So the first thing is going to talk about is affordability, right? How much you can actually afford. And let me give you a good example of that. Uh, what, what we'll see typically is a spouse have an additional, let's say a car payment or credit card that's not on the veterans uh, or the primary borrowers uh, application. And I say that because sometimes you have dual military. So I'm always counting whoever uh, we're using their VA home loan as the primary borrower and that's the veteran. Uh, and the spouse will be the person that's not using their VA home loan, even if they are a veteran. So that's what I mean by all of that. Okay. So let's say a spouse has uh, an additional car payment on their mortgage that the veteran doesn't, right? So that's going to affect how much they can afford. Now, if they have a job and they can qualify based on the VA's rules, which we also did a video on that, uh, they're pretty loose. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, but the thing is, is then it starts eating away at how much you can actually afford. And a good example of that is that a $619 car payment equals about a $100,000 mortgage when using the VA home loan. That's why you want to be able to know what the other person has, especially when you're going into a transaction. Now, there's one caveat to this is that if you buy in a community property state, then the spouse's credit will have to be looked at even if they're not in the mortgage. That's why, again, you need to really understand that and control spending so you could get your credit up. Now, the other part's gonna be qualification. Uh, can you actually use the VA home loan? Now, look, the VA doesn't have a minimum requirement for a credit score when using your VA home loan, but lenders do have those requirements because most of these mortgages, yes, all mortgages are guaranteed by the VA home uh, by the VA but they are sold off on the secondary markets and investors do want some type of requirement now the VA does allow for higher debt to income ratios right 
But there's really, uh, I, you know, there's, there's two ways a VA loan is really originated, right? It's either you go through a standard process with like an, what's called an automated underwriting process, and then what's called a manual underwrite, when an underwriter actually has to review it by hand because you don't, miss, uh, you don't meet the risk uh, threshold or eligibility threshold for an automated system, which that automated system has better interest rates. So all of that's going to uh, factor against you. Now, the VA does have guidelines that it has in place that, yes, uh, some lenders offer them down to 500. Uh, we work with those as well. Uh, but just note, there's going to be two other factors uh, that go into that process that's going to have a big impact, which is primarily going to be on the interest rate and the fees that you're being charged again uh you already fought for your country you, to earn that va home loan so you know take control of your credit your budget in order to avoid getting just uh gouged by higher prices and interest rates because of your credit score now one thing i didn't mention is that you know higher dti require like so once you go over a certain debt to income requirement uh a threshold should i say uh, and separately, the VA does look at what's called residual income to qualify you for your VA home loan. At a certain point, your debt to income ratio goes to a certain point where it triggers your residual income requirement to be even higher, reducing how much you can buy, which is which is crazy, but that's just how it works. Now, let's talk about interest rates. So the higher your interest rate, the better your credit score is just due to the nature of um because okay look lenders are going to look at your credit a credit report represents your past performance right so it shows like up until today how you've been paying your bills right that's what a credit score reflects so if you make all your payments on time you have low utilization of your credit you have a couple credit cards and you can demonstrate over a period of time that you can pay your bills and pay them on time everybody wants to work with you right because they show that you know how to manage your money so budgeting right so of course everybody wants to get those clients and offer them the best deals possible because the chances of them defaulting are extremely low now I get life events happen, uh, but typically we'll see those in clusters like, oh, in these three months, because of somebody passed away or going through a divorce situation or someone lost their job, then they're going to be grouped together. And that's pretty easy to explain. We do that as a manual underwrite and you're going to be just fine with that. Right. But then when you see a large pattern of just being late, not paying bills on time, then it really kind of gets uh, it gets really tricky. Uh, and then after a certain credit score, it automatically triggers into what's called a manual underwrite, which, again, the rates can vary on that. And they're typically going to be higher uh, when looking at a manual underwrite versus the other one. Now, the way a lender is going to look at the credit reports, because uh, I just had a discussion with someone about this, is that every lender is going to pull what's called a tri merge which is all three credit bureaus now they'll use the middle score to qualify you for the rate okay but the overall credit is going to be used within their system for an overall um qualification because sometimes some credit uh, um, bureaus will pull things that others don't that's why it's all factored in together when it comes to that okay so if your middle score is let's say 740 but your spouse's middle score is 620 the lender is going to use 620 to get you your interest rate now that's the other thing that's going to be factored into is that the lower your credit score is the higher fees you're going to in inherently have just because at some point because we see this when we look at rates is that the rate will be so high that you're going to have to buy down the interest rate just from a points perspective. And sometimes the lender won't even give you an option to have a what's called a par rate where you don't have to pay a fee just because of how bad the credit is. Now, again, with credit, it just takes time and or money because seven from seven years from the last time that you have derogatory credit, the uh, credit bureaus, it's going to fall, it's going to fall off the credit bureaus, which is positive, but sometimes it's just a waiting game. So all in all, focusing on budgeting is the number one thing that I'll probably have you take, you know, I would like for you to take away from this because uh, that's going to set you up for success. Now, if you guys have questions, schedule a call with us, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and we'll catch you guys soon.